G'day guys, um, just a quick supplemental on the previous video that I did on Rob. Um, I'll just quickly share my screen. Okay, so Bruce Lee actually um, left a comment. He said, was hoping you'd cover this topic. A few people in the chat mentioned eating sufficient protein will raise insulin. To which Rob replied, nope, no, that won't happen. Need to block glucagon to raise insulin. Uh, not exactly, Rob. Um, insulin is sort of on a gradient, and so is glucagon, the insulin to glucagon ratio. So it varies, you know, it sort of will magnify in either direction. You really, in order to suppress, you know, um, you know, glucagon excretion, that means to get no gluconeogenesis you know, completely to suppress, you have to really push those anabolic pathways. So even when you're eating just pure glucose, you will still have some glucagon in the system. You really have to engage the Randall cycle, really push the stuff to really suppress it. So not exactly, you know, and as I showed, you can still get a spike in insulin with high amounts of, um, without suppressing glucagon high amounts of certain of proteins and other things in the previous video but let's let's just go on what he's actually arguing this requires gpl1 glucagon like peptide one from consumed carbs so you need to consume carbs to get gp glp1 to, to raise that's true and we have proven that to be false under veteran carnival conditions is what um, uh, Bruce, Bruce Lee um, is claiming, and I agree with that. We thought so too, um, uh, proved false. That's why he did this, um, uh, you know, that's why he sort of did the video. He's sort of uh, um, extrapolating because that's what they thought as veterans and all that. This is my reply. If one doesn't like eating heaps of protein, why eat carbs to raise GLP-1 when whey and dairy can do a better job without raising blood glucose to high levels. Check out the third point in the description. I anticipated this question. I anticipate a lot of things. Glucagon like peptide one, GPL one response were higher after whey compared to white bread, Rob. No, you're wrong. You can raise GPL one with whey. You don't need to use bread. And the deleterious effects of eating gluten-rich foods or whatever other carbohydrates you, that have got glycating factors like honey, especially if you're living in Costa Rica, you usually go for that sort of option of 100 grams and you were sort of recommending something similar. Have you been talking with your Costa Rican friend? You know, and things like that. And then the other thing that I actually put here, recent advances in nutritional research have anticipated the combination of ingest. I'll actually go to the actual studies. This one actually talks about, you know, the recent advances in nutritional research have anticipated, uh, implicated the combination ingestion of protein and calcium. Protein and calcium combination will enhance endogenous GLP-1 release which is likely due to activation of receptors with high affinity or the sensitivity for amino acids and calcium. Got it? So, which basically is a pastoral diet, like the, like the Maasai, you know, um, in a sense. But also, if you're eating bone broths and, you know, getting calcium and stuff like that from bones and stuff like that, which traditional tribal people did, you don't need to eat, you know, they didn't eat dairy, they ate bones, they broke bones, they got the bone marrow, and they also got some of the cartilage of the bones, which they would have got some of the calcium, okay? They were outdoors as well. Remember, when you're outdoors, what, have you, what are you going to be hiring? Vitamin D status. What does vitamin D do? It actually increases the uptake of calcium, doesn't it, kiddies? So combining calcium and amino acids will increase GLP-1. But if you're a sedentary person living, you know, trying to do a carnival diet in the city and working in an office and having sub subclinical levels of, you know, low vitamin D levels, well, then you may, and not eating enough protein as well, because we also know 
that dietary protein, dietary protein, calcium metabolism, and skeletal homeostasis is revisited. Increased dietary protein was accompanied by a significant increase in intestinal calcium absorption. Got it? And they used dual stable isotope methodology. So they actually, you know, were able to track it. So dietary protein intake at below 8.8 grams per kilogram were associated with, with probable reductions in intestinal calcium absorption, sufficient to cause secondary hyperparathyroidism. This is what they recommend, 0.8. This is the problem. These low levels are causing para, um, hyperparathyroidism. Um, uh, you know, when you combine higher calcium, basically the um, higher protein intakes, you don't get this problem. These problems are all associated with basically reduced calcium to uptake because of reduced protein intake. The problem is they're all scared of mTOR. And I've talked about this before. I'm not going to cover it again and have another rant about it. You know, so basically these are the sort of these are the sort of problems that these people have. They don't understand physiology properly, and they don't know understand that when you're ancestrally, you know, my old thing, salt, sun, and salt, sun, and meat. When you get enough sun, you got better. You got better vitamin D status. You got better calcium homeostasis, better calcium metabolism, better better uptake. You're also good at more taurine. Remember, taurine is a calcium channel blocker, a natural one. It also improves calcium homeostasis in the actual um, uh, in the body, which is really important. So this combination of protein, calcium, and all that, because of getting sufficient protein. You know, not fearing protein basically sorts these problems out. These are myths. A lot of these people, I would suspect highly, a lot of these people are doing lower protein. And even one of the other guys, I mean, some, um, the person who actually, Heinrich, that actually I started the preview of pseudo said, oh, you know, he eats about, in, in, he has only, um, you know, a couple of meals, has about 40 to 50 grams of protein. I go, he said, I couldn't eat as much as you. I'm going, well, that's, you know, that's the problem with a lot of people. You know, I'm, I'm basically stuffing, you know, down big steak in one of my big meals and all that. And I'm getting anywhere from a hundred. I'm, I'm a short bloke. I'm a short bloke. You know, I'm, you know, I'm below the average and I'm stuffing myself with, you know, 150, 160 grams of protein. That's the problem. People are not eating sufficient protein. You know, if you're in a low carbohydrate state in order to basically support this, you look at tribal people, they go out and they have a, they will, it, it's basically get the animal, come back and feast. They don't say sit there like, you know, middle class, um, uh, you know, going, oh, I cannot have any more. You know, I've had too much meat and they've had a little thing like that. Oh, much how much I'm full. Uh, can you bring the cake over? That's the problem with our modern society. You know, they fear meat. They think that just, you know, having something like that, God, how can you eat that? I, that's the sort of, you know, I'm at work and I've got this big bloody steak and people just look and they go, bloody hell, Harry. I can't believe how much meat you're eating. You know, that's their problem. That is the modern thinking. They think it's too much. Look at this, 0.8. That's what they re actually recommend even less than 0.8. Well, fear of mTOR, God, we can't raise that. That is the, the, the new, the idiocy. That's what creates problems. There you've got, it, you know, dietary calcium, you know, dietary protein intake at and below 0.8, which is what a lot of these crackpots recommend in the low carb community, were associated with probable reductions of intestinal calcium absorption sufficient to cause secondary. Um, hyperparathyroidism. We know calcium, you know, and this is where you get this masking effect when you eat carbs. That's the sort of Ray Peat nonsense. Oh, it's the hyperthyroid. You know, you get your protein up, you don't have that problem. You get more calcium. We know that calcium absorption increases with basically 
when you basically consume more dietary protein. It's the fear of protein. We've been saying this for a while, you know, sort out your insulin sort of levels, sort out your muscle proteins, sort out you being not continuously in a catabolic state and being, you know, part of the day in an anabolic state and switching between shifting and being in this low grade in and out of ketosis is what me and Bart have been saying, you know, one big meal. I do, he does one big meal. I do one big meal and a snack. And even that is be above the 35 grand. So guys, you've got to up your protein intake. Stop fearing animal foods. Look at Bart. He actually went like with priming, way, way up there with priming. And what did he do? He enhanced muscle protein synthesis. Obviously, you know, he was taking a bit of taurine and all that, which also has a myostatin inhibition, which will magnify. And he was taking some other thing as well. But that also, I mean, you could do a hack like that. Obviously, if you were getting fresh animal foods, you wouldn't have to do that. But you can also do a hack, you know, a gram or two with, every, with that big meal to magnify the effects of the leucine muscle protein synthesis by inhibiting slightly more because these meats have been hung for a long time that, you know, and that's the other issue with, um, with, you know, not freshly slaughtered, like in the, you know, so that's what we call halal, freshly slaughtered, you know, basically that was traditional. It wasn't halal. It was, everyone did it like that in the past. Unfortunately, we don't do it anymore because of modern food practices, but you know, these are important things that we need to consider. And that's the problem in the carnival community. People don't nuance and understand these traditional tribal ways of eating, hunting and, uh, you know, and lifestyle. And so when you've got this sort of middle-class bullshit sort of attitude of, oh, too much, you know, oh, God, you know, there's so much, there's so much flesh on that plate, that sort of attitude, what do you expect? They get all these problems and they go, oh, it must be the diet. No, it's basically you're not doing it ancestrally. You fear the stuff that our ancestors loved. They relished. They hunted these animals across the entire globe and they spread over the entire globe to try and get the flesh of animals. Let's be more like our ancestors and stop this nonsense, bullshit, highly catabolic nonsense that um, has creeped in from the deranged keto community. You know, I mean, they've even gone worse now with reducing protein even further and going more plant-based and all that you know, oxalate on top of protein deficiencies and whatever else. They're going to damage the keto brand because of this lunacy. But anyway, what can one do but bring this to your attention? Hope you enjoyed this. See you.